everyone. Welcome to Cumulative Upkeep. I'm your host, Brandon, with my other host, Jay. Hey, hey there. Uh, so <laughs> what this podcast is, is we'll start off with what we played, then we'll go into news of the moment, and uh, we'll end with the main topic. The main topic this week is Ixalan spoilers. Very excited. Right? <laughs> so let's start off. Jay, have you played anything? I have. I've played a couple times. But most memorably was Saturday night and um, played two games. And I won a game with Platinum Angel out and oh. uh, negative 59 life. I, I, it's a first. It's a first. But I've actually oh, won man. with negative life. And I felt pretty good about that. <laughs> Achievement. <laughs> Achievement unlocked. Right. What about you, B? A couple of weeks ago, I think I did a draft, um, did a really aggressive deck, thought it was like amazing, and my first game I lost against Flyers, so okay. that always, that's always sad. But then I won the next two games, so I went two and one, so not bad. Not bad, yeah. Yep. Yeah, so hey, got some Magic games in. Got some Magic games in. <laughs> yeah. Better than right, last so time. Well, <laughs> exactly, I didn't do anything last week, so. Oh. <laughs> so do you want to go into news now? Yeah, let's go into news. Let's do it. So let's start off with, uh, I went to PAX. Hey. Yay. So PAX is apparently a convention mainly for video games. Uh, as uh, I, apparently? As I learned. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I always thought it was like board games, video games, card games, and like anime and all kinds of stuff. Okay. But w when I went, it was mainly like indie games and stuff and board games. Okay. So last year, Wizards like went all out for uh, for their, what was the set? It, wasn't it Kaladesh? Kaladesh. Yeah. Kaladesh, yes. Thank you. Sorry. And they had like a uh, parade in the streets. They had Eldrazi smashing cop cars. They <laughs> so were cool. giving away giant uh, magic cards on Twitter and like the little plushy gremlins and stuff like that. And they like rented out an entire theater. Like it wasn't at the convention yeah. center. It was like a huge deal. Yeah, they like had the Magic World Cup there and everything. And this year, uh, Cascade Games, they did their best, but they got, <laughs> like I, when I went, I went to the main place I went to every floor, I was looking for magic, didn't see it. Apparently it was in the annex in the basement, was oh. the place for magic. Oh yeah. no! <laughs> yeah, so I go down there and it's like, you know, a few tables, like, okay, that's pretty good, but only like one table is filled, the other were just like smatterings of people. There was a line of people signing up for like um, the events, there was like drafts and it's like a GP basically, how they have the side events, it was like that. Okay. But it was just like, that was it. And that was the only magic presence I saw there at all. It oh, was just man. really sad. Yeah. That's really I, depressing. It was, because that was the main thing I went for, because I saw last year, and I was hoping this year would be better. But it turns out they're all going for HasCon, which is coming up at this end of this week. So they, must, so they must have just spent so much money that they were like, hey, why don't we just like put on our own convention? Right? Yeah, right. Like, I mean, why give this all the attention? We can just have our own convention, apparently. And right, exactly. You just want to go into HasCon? Yeah. yeah, we're just going to go Let's into HasCon. Talk about HasCon. Uh, so okay, next weekend, not? right? It's HadCon. Yeah, right? Um, probably the most exciting thing. One Iconic Masters, mm -hmm. they're, they are, they're doing a, an event where they get to, they're, you actually get to like do sealed with it, right? It's basically like a pre-release basically. Oh, that's what? That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. What? But it's like super expensive, I think. But still, I mean, you're getting to see it like two months early, I think. Yeah, that's rad. Yeah, that's cool. But also, you have to go to Rhode Island for that. <laughs> But also, <laughs> but yeah, those promos. Yeah, are... so that's the most important part. Um, specifically Grimlock. I know in Ixalan we're getting a commander, a, a dinosaur commander, but Grimlock. Can we? Yeah. But but Grimlock and uh, Grimlock. <laughs> I, I just love you know house rules. If you ever play with me, that card is fine. But you have to have oh, your yeah. transformer with exactly. you. And yeah, oh, I'm so excited. I just before I die, I want to see that magic game take place. <laughs> And also what's cool is uh, Mark Rosewater said that transform cards count as transformers. So oh, really? Cards. Oh. Yeah, so they can count as that, so. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, cool. Yeah, right? I don't know. It's like, hey, throw them a bone, right? Right. And then Sword of Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, that's, that's the one I want the most. Right? With the token. Doesn't yeah. it come with? The that's the one that comes with the token? Yep. It's beautiful looking. Beautiful. <laughs> and then the nerf one looks a lot of fun. The art's like crazy cool. Right? But. Yeah, I'll take that. What I, I looked up, like, you know, they're going for $30 there. I was like, I'll look on eBay, see what they're pre-selling for. It's like $150. Oh, God. <laughs> I was like, I don't, I'm not going to get that for that much. But maybe once they, like, are released, they'll come down some, see if there's much interest in them. Right, exactly. Oh, man. Yeah. I know the sword will be in the unset, so. 
That's good at least. Oh man, are you? I don't think Grimlock will be though. About unset? Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I mean, that looks like it's fun to play. Right. Like, okay, What's scale the... scale of 1 to 10. Rate Ixalan and then rate Unstable. Unstable, yeah. yeah. Okay. Ixalan is looking like, fun-wise, it's going to be a 9 for me. Dude, right? <laughs> it looks super fun. Uh, unstable, I'll give it a 7 because I probably won't get to play it once. Okay. Because that's how it's like conspiracy, where like that weekend everyone's hyped about it, and then after that no one wants to play it ever again. And then it's just like on the shelves forever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Unless you can get like some friends to play with you, or you throw it into like a chaos draft or something, it probably won't do too well. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Because I mean, they're cards you can't play with regular magic, so. I know, right. That's the sad part. That is unfortunate. <laughs> okay, uh, I would like to move on to something I've been looking forward to very much, but I will never get. The Ajani statue oh. from Prime One Studios. So pretty. So this thing is like, they've shown off a prototype of a Nicobolus, which looked amazing. Yeah. And this is the finished Ajani. Okay. And it's like, just so detailed, but it's also $800. Oh man. <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, do you want me to make you feel better about that? Like sure, not, not being able to spend $800 on an Ajani statue? Oh, I thought, I thought it was going to be something you spent $800 on. Oh, so I, well. It would give me a reason to buy this. No. no. <laughs> uh, so where's Elspeth's cloak? That's all I ask. Like, oh, yeah. Ajani should have Elspeth's cloak, and not having it is just, frankly, a disgrace. So You know why? It's because he gave it back to her because he saved her. Because he went down there and said, Because she's go. alive? Okay. Spoilers. Spoilers. Black, white, <laughs> black, white Elspeth. <laughs> Exclusive right here. <laughs> Okay, well, that makes my heart yeah. happier, and but I'm sorry that you'll still have to spend $800 now. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll wait till it goes on clearance or something. Yeah, there we go. Uh, there we go. <laughs> there we go, yeah. Down to 600 Yes, exactly. Oh, so, such a savings. Oh. <laughs> Can I trade some cards for it? Right, exactly. Uh, next, we have Magic Digital Next, or Ma Magic the Gathering Arena now, it's called. Okay. This is the, I guess it's going to be like Hearthstone Magic. Right. Or maybe just... You know, Duels of Planeswalker again, just better. Okay. Yeah, so they're going to be showing it off at Hascon, of course. Okay. But they're going to be doing a special preview September 7th on Twitch at 1 p.m. Pacific. Okay. So if you want to see what it's going to be like, hey. you can turn in then. Um, I mean, if it comes to the iOS, I'll play it. Right. I'm just, yeah, I just hope it's a little bit more user-friendly than uh, Duels of Planeswalker. Did you ever play that before? I did. I, I thought it was okay. fun. I mean, It's fun. It's just, I, it's not as like... Pick up and learn as like Hearthstone or something. I felt like it's true. I think yeah. My favorite thing about it uh, were the challenges. So like yeah, the, oh that was so cool. And I guess like way back when in Magic's history they had like books that were just like full of those challenges. Yeah, and I think uh, Mark Rosewater used to write an inquest and do like little puzzles in the back. That's so fun. Of like how would I win this in one step or something like that. Yeah. Oh, that's so much yeah. fun. What? That's so right. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I hope they do that again. That was very cool. Yeah. So Hascom sounds like it has a lot going for it. It does, uh, but I mean, they were selling tickets for like half price on Groupon. That's unfortunate. <laughs> it's very unfortunate. So I mean, if say they have another one next year and it's not in Rhode Island, I might go to that. I mean, maybe. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, and by my not in Rhode Island, I mean in California. <laughs> If it's within six hours, I'm there. Yes, exactly. Right? Yeah. I mean, I flew to PAX and yeah, so. Okay. Yeah. What are your predictions for Iconic Masters? Oh, that's right. Oh. Well, we know it's going to be Sphinxes and Dragons. And, and Hydras. Other, and Hydras. Oh, that sounds so unappealing <laughs> to me. Uh, <laughs> Green, Green's Iconic Monster is like. Yeah, right? Hydras and, you know, how everyone loves blue Sphinxes. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, <laughs> Um, a lot of people are guessing, like, maybe cards in Old Borders, something like that. But Old Borders? Is that worth it for, is that a nice a ni nice enough gimmick for a $10 pack? I mean, are you Have talking you... about, like, Consecrated Sphinx made with an Old Border? Like, yeah, that sort like of thing? Yeah, like a revised border or something. Not Probably not White Border, but, you know, like, something like that. I don't know, people are, like, excited for that for some reason. That doesn't very sound doesn't sound very appealing to me. Right. Yeah, like I don't want another ship and dragon, like as of my rare in a ten dollar pack. <laughs> oh goodness! Oh yeah, I'm yeah. really curious to see like value wise what that's gonna look like. Yeah, because it's not gonna be anything on the reserve list. I don't. I, it's not gonna be. <laughs> right. It's probably just all dragon storm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was my first pack. What What was it? The original Modern Masters had dragon storm yeah, in it. Yeah. Yeah. First pack. Right? I was like, 
mm. cool. Sealed cool. is worth it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, next, we have uh, very fast. The band and reserve list was announced. Oh yeah. Nothing. Yeah, nothing for standard or modern or legacy, but vintage. Right. Did you get Thorn of Amethyst, Amethyst restricted? Yeah. Got Monastery Men Mentor restricted and Yagmas Bargain unrestricted. I haven't looked at vintage much. Is Monastery Mentor like really that? It's like yeah. My my friend Ivan has like some uh, vintage decks. Yeah. And Mentor is basically just play Mentor, get like. Moxes out anything that costs zero basically just to get a ton of tokens. Oh, that's crazy! And then, yeah, just like kill them with a ton of tokens. And then uh, Amethyst is the workshops deck, so you're just you don't care about mana because you're making a ton of it. Okay, so they're just trying to like workshops, you know, it's like a what $900 card, yeah. So they're they don't want to restrict that card because it's so expensive, they'll make people mad. So they're just trying to get the other little tools Part of, of it. it restricted. Yeah, yeah exactly. And yeah. Yagamas Bargain, I'm not quite sure what that was in. Yeah, I don't know either. Yeah. I mean, it's been I'm, restricted for a while, right? For, yeah, forever. So, yeah. And they also like shot up in price. So, okay, I think that does it for news. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Moving cool. on. Okay, and our main topic, Ixalan Spoilers. Ixalan Spoilers! Woo! Okay, <laughs> you want to talk about the new legendary rule? Yeah, uh, so... New legendary rule. Planeswalkers are now legendary, and so you can have like two different Jaces out at the same time, which is cool, or all of the Jaces out, or literally Gideon Tribal. Yeah, everyone always jokes really about that, but. Yeah, exactly. That's what everyone wants. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason that's relevant in my world is because my boo, Captain Sisei, shot up in price because I guess she's like relevant now. Right? Because you mean, can... can get Planeswalkers now. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, so my playgroup is already. Uh, even though the legendary rule doesn't necessarily go into effect until Ixalan, we, we've uh -huh. already started working with it and it's fun. I'm sure you push for that, right? Yeah, I was like, hey, hey, you guys mind? <laughs> hey guys, we like, should just do this. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, why not? And then you're like, Sisse. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh, we should have known this was coming. <laughs> right. Yeah, like the rule before was just like really confusing. Yeah. Like once you explain it, you kind of got it, but it, like for a new player, you'd be like, wait, so I can only have one of the subtype? Like, one of a Jace type, and it's like, right. oh, let's just change it to make it so you can't have any Jace, just not the same name. Right, exactly. You know? Makes makes sense to me. Makes a lot more sense. Yeah. So let's talk about the mechanics of Ixalan. Red. First, we have Enrage. So this is basically whenever a creature is dealt damage, a trigger will happen. Okay. So Belling Aegisaur. <laughs> it's five and a white for a three five. It has Enrage. Whenever it's dealt damage, put a plus one plus one counter on each other creature you control. We have Sun Crowned Hunters for Red Red for a 5 4. And whenever it is dealt damage, it deals 3 damage to target opponent. And Rip Jaw Raptor, 2 Green Green for a 4 5. And whenever it's dealt damage, you draw a card. Can we back up to Sun Crowned Hunters? I'm just going to read th the flavor text. One alone is dangerous, and they're never alone. <laughs> <laughs> right. I love that. It's beautiful. Yeah, so basically, whenever something is dealt damage, a trigger happens. Like, the Raptor drawing cards, that's just so good. Right. Uh, Unlimited, the Bellowing is like just pumps your whole team. I feel like this mechanic is going to just shine in Limited. Yeah. I don't know about like standard. Maybe you can, there's going to be a card revealed that's amazing. I think, I mean, the draw card one at rare is nice, but I don't think it's like going to break anything, it feels like. Right. Yeah. I mean, pretty expensive for what? Yeah. Two six costs, and then that that's a four cost, yeah. Four cost for a four five, which is fine, yeah, but doesn't have any like evasion or anything. It's just going to draw you some cards if, if dealt damage. Stompy di dinosaur, yeah. Exactly. Hmm. Right, our next mechanic is raid. This is if you attack this turn, an effect would happen basically. So, uh, rune raider two and a black for a three two. He has raid at the beginning of your end step. If you attack with a creature this turn, reveal the top card of your library and put that card into your hand. You lose life equal to the card's converted mana cost. And then Dead-Eyed Tormentor, two and a black for a 2-2. Two, two. Raid, whenever it enters a battlefield, if you attack with a creature this turn, target opponent discards a card. So we got Orc Pirate Bob. Yeah, right? Right. <laughs> and I like the, the Tormentor for uh, limited, just anytime you get to make someone discard a card for a creature you want to play, always good. Right, exactly. Yeah, I, th I think both of those would be fun. Yeah, I mean, Raid was really fun in uh, Cons. Oh, yeah. And next we have Treasures. These are artifact tokens with tap, sacrifice this artifact, 
Add one mana of any color to your mana pool. I like the idea of treasures. I keep wanting to confuse them with the coins that you got from the the red uh, curse. Since commander, the commander oh, just yeah, came right? out. Yeah, yeah, so I keep wanting to call them coins, but I, yeah, I, I really right. like that. I mean, there's a lot of um, nice mana fixing in this set. Like they just came out with that, the spoiler for the uh, one and a green for basically Birds of Paradise. And the, yeah, that guy was crazy. Yeah, right? right. Like pumps dinosaurs at the same time. Like that's so cool. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah. Like that's a two drop that's a mana fixer. It's like, wow, he does a lot of things actually. Right, exactly. <laughs> and then Revel and Riches is super rad. Right? That card's like, and like for me, for limited, that's not exciting at all. It's right. Five mana do nothing, but. In EDH. I mean, yeah, exactly. That's a win condition right there. Right, exactly. Uh, I, I'll just go ahead and read it. Sure. Um, whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, create a colorless treasure artifact token with tap, sacrifice this artifact, add one mana of any color to your mana pool, and then at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control 10 or more treasures, you win the game. That's so good. I love I, that. I love cards like that. Like silly, stupid alt win conditions. They're my exactly. favorite. Yeah. Like they come down and people are like, really? Really you doing this? And you're like, yeah, I'm doing this. And I'm about to win next turn if you don't do anything about it. <laughs> and then, uh, like, what was it in Return to Ravnica, the Maze's End? That was like... Yeah. I mean, that was a standard deck. And my friend actually, like, <laughs> won with that. And you're just like, okay, sure. <laughs> How? How did that happen? <laughs> Nobody saw it coming, that's why. Yeah, I also love the name. Revel in Riches. Yeah, I, the art, just throwing coins everywhere. I know, it's, it's so fabulous. And our next mechanic is Explore. Uh, I'll just read one of the cards. Dead Eye Tracker, one black for a 1-1. One, one. Pay one and a black, tap, exile two target cards from an opponent's graveyard. Dead Eye Tracker, Explorers. And Explorer is reveal a top card of your library. Put that card into your hand if it's a land. Otherwise, put a plus one, plus one counter on this creature, then put the card back or put it into your graveyard. I dig it. Yeah, it's very cool. I mean, there's also another one, uh, Tishana's Wayfinder, two and a green for a 2-2, two, two, and when there's a battlefield, you explore. That's just a cool mechanic, I think. Like, helps you mana fix, it can pump your creatures if you need it, and you don't really, like, lose any card advantage on it. You can just put it back or get rid of it if you don't need it. Right. Okay, yeah. okay, pick one. Pirates, merfolk, dinosaurs. Oh, man. I mean, I think it's pirates. Gotta be pirates. I don't know if they're gonna be good, but I, I really like the pirates. Yeah. What about you? Uh, for, yeah, probably. Grixis pirates. That's super cool. I know, right? Right. I the merfolk. Why are they blue green? Why not? Because they've always been blue white. I thought. I mean, they were in the Lorwyn block. Yeah, that's all that matters. <laughs> <laughs> that's our only measure of what yeah, things should be. Lorwyn. Exactly. Lorwyn. <laughs> right. It ends and begins with Lorwyn. <laughs> And also we have the return of vehicles. Yay, vehicles! Woo, vehicles! <laughs> Which were pretty fun and limited, I have to say. Right. And kind of destroyed in standard at times. Mm. So. <laughs> Maybe they've learned their lesson. We'll see. Maybe. Mardu vehicles, still a thing. Yeah, right. <laughs> so you have a sleek schooner. This is three for a four three. And it's crew one. That's pretty cheap. I mean, right? For a four three? Yeah. Yeah, that's... I mean, it doesn't have any evasion, so that's... Makes it pretty fair, yeah. but the crew one is always annoying. <laughs> like a 1-1 one, one token just crewing an entire ship. I, right. <laughs> just rogue pirates going after you. <laughs> just one, though. Yeah, exactly. Right. I'm hoping there's like some kind of mythic vehicle that could be super fun. Yeah. Have they released all of the, you know how like that big sheet got spoiled? Have they released all of the official spoilers for the what well, oh yeah well like i guess they talked about how that sheet was spoiled mm -hmm. i guess it was real someone uh at the printer who worked there just like took a picture and everything and they're like doing legal action so they can't talk too much about it mm. but everything that was on the sheets that's what that's why there was such a big spoiler oh, okay the first day they just revealed everything that was on the sheets cool so yeah so well yeah <laughs> probably <laughs> kind of sucks for them Probably yeah, a different printer I, next time. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll see. I mean, they've got a lot of printer issues, apparently. Oh. So, <laughs> Yeah. But uh, I like that they just, re they just like, you know what? You guys know what it is. Here it all is. So why not? Yeah. yeah. No point in, like, spreading it out, knowing what was coming already. <laughs> Surprise! It's this dinosaur you already knew about. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the last day of reveals. Here you go. It's like, cool thing. <laughs> Speaking of dinosaurs. Oh, goodness. Planeswalkers. Dinosaur night. <laughs> Yeah. Do you want to talk about the dinosaur knight? Uh, yeah. Uh, how should we pronounce her? Ha how I don't know. That's why I said for you to do it. Okay, good. 
Houtley. We're going to call her Houtley. Houtley? Uh, okay. Houtley. Uh, Houtley. Dinosaur Knight. Legendary Planeswalker. Um, her plus two, she starts with four loyalty, and then her plus two is put two plus one plus one counters on up to two target dinosaurs, or up to one target dinosaur one, you yeah. control. Her minus three is target dinosaur you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control. And then minus seven, dinosaurs you control get plus four, plus four until end of turn. So this is the Planeswalker deck right. version of her. Yeah. Right. So not that exciting. Yeah, she's pretty <laughs> underwhelming. Yeah, right? Six <laughs> mana for four loyalty is like, eh. Yeah. And then let's see. You get to pump a creature. So that's cool. Or, yeah. Guess, it's, it's not even a creature. It's a dinosaur. So it has to be yeah, a dinosaur. It has to be a dinosaur. Less, way yeah. less cool. Yeah. And that's... target dinosaur you control deals damage for its minus three, which <laughs> can kind of protect it if it's, do they have one creature attacking you? So also not too exciting. I guess. <laughs> and it's minus seven, plus four, plus four, all your dinosaurs. It's a, it's a very dinosaur centric card. <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, but... I mean, it's for that deck. I well, mean, I guess if you're going to do, like, a Dinosaur Commander deck... They don't even get Trample. I mean... I know, right? <laughs> we're... So, sorry, Houtley. At least... Yeah. Uh, I mean, we have another one. Warrior Poet. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's... You want to talk uh, about that one? Yeah. They're, so they're both red and white. The first one is four red-white. This one's three red-white. Uh, and she comes in with three loyalty counters. You gain life equal to the greatest power among creatures you control is her plus two. Her zero is create a 3-3 three, three green dinosaur creature token with trample, and her minus X is Houtley Warrior Poet deals X damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures. Creatures dealt damage this way can't block this turn. Oh, much better. Much better. <laughs> <laughs> Five mana for three loads. He's a little low, and her plus two is okay. Like, yeah, I mean, what you're gonna do your four drop, which might be a four four, right? And then so you gain four life. I don't know if that's really worth it, but her zero, that's where it's at. Right, exactly. Making three three green dinosaur with a trample. Yeah, yeah. That's. I mean, she protects herself that way. You yeah. can attack next turn, make another one. Right. Yeah. And then her last, her minus X is uh, basically Aurelia's fur Fury. Yeah. Which is, you know, deal damage, and then they also can't block in case you didn't kill them. So that's cool. So you're going to zero yeah. her the whole time, basically. Yeah, exactly. That's the only reason. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I like that one a lot better, and in Limited, that card is amazing. Yeah, right? Uh, do you want to take, right. take it away with Jace? Let's, let's go to Jace, Ingenious Mind Mage, four blue blue for a five loyalty, so not bad there. Plus one draw a card. Plus one, untap all creatures you control. Minus nine, gain control of up to three target creatures. I wish we had a comparison of um, other minus nines. Like, yeah, right? It seems like <laughs> it should be a pretty big ability. I mean, I yeah. know he starts with five, but still. But still, minus nine, like, just, I mean, up to three target creatures isn't bad. It's not but bad. But it's not going to win you the game automatically. Right. Maybe one on one, but like, say you're playing commander. Right. That's cool, but I don't know if you're going to... That's just going to make you a big target with everyone. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I'll take one of each. You're like, what are you doing? You're just... We're all going to attack you now. <laughs> yeah, what? Good. <laughs> I mean, six mana is a lot. So he's probably not going to see standard play or anything. But, I mean, hey. plus one to draw a card is always fine. Right. Plus one to... And it's both plus ones. So there's no minus there. <laughs> On tap all creatures you control. I mean, if you're a wizard's deck and you have tap abilities, maybe. Hey. Hey. <laughs> But yeah, this is the Planeswalker, so it's not, you know, going to break the game or anything. Right. And then we have a Jace Cunning Castaway. Two blue-blue for three loyalty. Plus one. Whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player this turn, draw a card, then discard a card. Minus two. Create a 2-2 two -two blue illusion creature token with when this creature becomes the target of a spell, sacrifice it. Minus five. Create two tokens that are copies of Jace Cunning Castaway, except they're not legendary. I mean... Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's three mana, so that's cheap. That's good. Right. Uh, <laughs> minus two to create a very weak blocker. <laughs> right. Why? I mean, it's like... With doubling season out, you can create... The infinite all, weak blockers <laughs> exactly you can create all the bad jaces <laughs> i mean this guy's he's just not very good to me i mean he's cheap so that's good so right. maybe that will do something 
But it's plus one, you have to have a creature just to use it. So. It's, uh, well, you know, maybe they were going for... Uh, he He's showing a little bit of his chest. Maybe they were going for the shock factor, like, like this yeah, card. Exactly. Like, look, it's Chase's chest. There, there you go. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> let's, let's not focus on the text. Let's focus on this art. I know. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe they're trying to be like a blue aggressive, because, I mean, he's making it so creatures are dealing damage and creating tokens. But... Yeah, he's not very exciting to me. Yeah, I kind of like the Planeswalker one a little bit better. Right, I, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. I'm not saying a lot, because six mana is a lot for... Yeah, like, I mean, and I'm, yeah, I'm not saying I love that card. I'm just saying it's a little bit better. It's, it's more exciting. <laughs> the yeah, one I don't exciting. like. Yeah. <laughs> right. And then I want to talk about some of the cards that I think will be, like, are exciting me for limited. Yeah, definitely. Uh, first is Walk the Plank. This is the promo card. It's... A black black for sorcery, destroy target, non merfolk creature. I was gonna say I love that full art that they had the promo. It's so pretty. Amazing. It's so pretty. Yeah. It's just a guy a pirate just looking down like he's about to get just walked off that plank. Right, exactly. Uh so I read this forum once that was talking about um cards in magic where you like um so it's like tragic slip. You cast tragic slip on like uh, an Eldrazi. So then, uh, uh, like, that image of an Eldrazi, like, slipping on a banana oh, yeah, peel is, like, the funniest thing right. ever. And so I keep imagining that Walk the Plank for, like, dinosaurs. <laughs> it's like, wow. The ship's just, like, tipping over. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> oh. I mean, I'm sure it's fine for limited, but... <laughs> yeah, I don't know, yeah. I don't know if it's going to see much play. I mean, sorcery <laughs> speed, which really sucks for standard or anything, yeah. but I just love the non non merfolk because, I mean... I know, right? Walk the Plank merfolk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. Right. <laughs> Freedom. <laughs> I love that. That's so flavorful. It's beautiful. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> uh, then I want to talk about Fathom Fleet Captain. This is one a black for two one human pirate. He has a menace. Whenever he attacks, if you control another non-token pirate, you may pay two. If you do, create a two two black pirate creature token with menace. Uh, I just love these type of cards. Just like little armies in a can. He attacks with menace, so. He's probably not going to get blocked too often, and you're just creating more two twos. It's uh, yeah, I just love this type of card. Yeah, that's oh, he's awesome. Yeah, I don't know if he's going to like see any other play, but in limited, that's like a first pick for me, totally. Red, okay. Uh, Entrancing Melody X blue blue for sorcery, gain control of target creature with converted mana cost X. Okay. And I love these type of effects because it's uh, just like a mind control, but this is on a sorcery. Yeah. So you just you just take it. You don't if they destroy. There's nothing to destroy. You just take it. It's mine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Love that type of thing. And then, ugh, Carnage Tyrant. Oh, he's so good. He's so dumb. Four green green for a seven six. <laughs> so six mana for a seven six. Can't be countered. <sighs> Has trample Oof. and hexproof. <laughs> <laughs> this is just like this comes down limited, and there's just nothing you can do about it. <laughs> and it's just it's it's really powerful. It's amazing, and to me, it's just so lazy. It's so lazy, like card design, it's so, or like yeah, it's just like oh, here's a, a bunch of mana for this big creature, and I don't know, give him hexproof. <laughs> what? And you know what? Do one better. Make it, make it so he can't be countered. I mean. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. Well, he has hexproof. I can deal with him. Oh, no. I can't do that. Oh, I can God. only board wipe him, basically. Oh, man. Yeah. It's just... This is the kind of card you hate to see in Limited because it's so one-sided. Oof. Yeah. What so. a, what but I, I will totally take it every time and play with it and die to it. Right. What a tyrant. Uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the carnage. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, next we have Lightning Strike. The Return of Lightning Strike. Yay. One in a red, and I know, not very exciting, but it's one in a red for an instant. <laughs> deals three damage to target creature or player. This is like the type of card you need in limited. Just three damage, kill a creature, do it to your face. But it's not common now. It used to be a common. Oh, really? So, yeah. So, I think it was uh, Theros was last time we saw it, maybe. Okay. Is so that new it's artwork? It's just an all-around... Yes. Okay. It's just awesome. Yeah, it's super awesome. <laughs> just getting electrified right there. Right? Oh, yeah. Uh, next, we have Burning Sun's Avatar. Three red red for a 6-6. Six, six. Dinosaur Avatar. When it enters the battlefield, it deals three damage to target opponent and three damage to up to one target creature. Right. So kind of like Inferno Titan, just a little not as good because it's three red. And right. also it doesn't do it when it attacks also. But still an amazing card unlimited. Yeah. 
yeah, this comes down, it's just going to, like, swing the game in your favor amazingly. doesn't have any, like, trample or anything, which kind of sucks, but you're dealing damage to creatures and opponents, so that's always good. Yeah, that's right. And it's a dinosaur avatar. <laughs> I, like, I like that they have more than one of those. Yeah, there was also the, the white one. Yeah. That was just released that if it's played from your hand, you destroy all non-dinosaur creatures. I did not see that. What? Yeah. So, I, yeah. So, it's five white, white. Comes to play from your hand only. Destroy all non-dinosaur creatures. What? So, That's so cool. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's really cool if you're playing a dinosaur deck. Right. But also, it kind of sucks you can't do any shenanigans with it with, like, from your graveyard or anything. But that only makes it fair, I guess. <laughs> I guess. Ugh. Ugh. Fairness. <laughs> And the last one I want to talk about for limited was Rivers Rebuke. Okay. Four blue blue for sorcery. Return all non land permanents. Target player controls your owner's hand. So usually, like these are just return everything. This is all of your opponents. Yes. Yeah. So that's what I really like about this one. It's like a, a cyclonic rift. Yeah. Exactly. So basically, like when you say you board wiped, you would like destroy everything, so then your opponent would then get to play something, so they're ahead. Now you have all your stuff, and then they're just so far behind. Right. So, always amazing and limited. So. Excellent. All right. Now we want to talk about some commander cards. Oh, uh, yeah, let's do it. Okay. Um, so the obvious ones are our legendary creatures, like another dinosaur avatar. Um, and I'm going to guess his name is pronounced Gizath. <laughs> Sure. Yeah, there it is. Sun's <laughs> Avatar. He has Trample, Vigilance, Haste. It's five red, green, white for a 7-6. And then it says, when he deals combat damage to a player, reveal that many cards from the top of your library, put any number of dinosaur creature cards from among them into the battlefield, and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Oof. Jesus Christ. <laughs> what a great dinosaur commander. That's amazing. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> What? Okay, okay, hold on. I'm going to read that again. Whenever break, break it down. Yeah, break it down for when, us. <laughs> whenever he deals combat damage to a player, reveal that many cards. So, he deals seven damage. At least seven. At least yeah. seven. At least seven. Oh, that's so exciting. What? That's like... I, I feel like previously you had a card like... Like, Mael was a really popular commander. Uh -huh. uh, because she does, like, the... You pay six, and then you can search the top five of your library yeah. and just, like, put cards... So, uh, dinosaur, <laughs> blowing my mind right now. You're so great. A plus dinosaur. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, it has to be in a dinosaur commander deck, which I don't know if there's enough dinosaurs yet. I'm sure you can find enough, though. Right. It, this isn't going to stop me from trying. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's in three colors. Right. <laughs> you made a werewolf deck, so. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have Tishana who is a green-blue, sorry, uh, green-blue merfolk shaman yeah. legendary creature. Uh, she's five, a green, and a blue for star, star, and her power and toughness are each equal to the number of cards in your hand. You have no maximum hand size, and then when she enters the battlefield, you draw a card for each creature you control. Okay, you tell me. Do you like this card? I would rather use prime speakers in Ghana. Yeah, that's how I was feeling. Yeah, this is like you're trying to go wide. Yeah. And the fact that also it's a seven drop kind of like doesn't really feel like it does enough. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. So, I mean, nice try. It's a merfolk. I appreciate yeah, exactly. that. Yeah. <laughs> if I was doing this unlimited, that's not a good limited card either. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, would you make a commander deck with either of these? Uh, the, dr the dinosaur, definitely. Uh, yeah. Tishana, no. Yeah. Like you said, I'd rather... Maybe... Put her in a commander deck. Right. Even then, I'm still not very excited. I I I would be disappointed opening this in a pack. Oh yeah, definitely. Right. It's, not excited about that card. Nah. But this next card I'm excited for. Admiral Beckett Brass. Okay. Do you think is this a woman or a man? Yes. Apparently, the artist that's his mom. Oh really? Oh, that's excellent. Yeah. I love that. Right. He put his mom in the art. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. I love that story. Oh, that's great. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> It's a uh, one, a blue, black, red. One, blue, black, red. It's a better way to say that. Uh, for a three, three, other pirates you control get plus one, plus one, yarg. Uh, at the beginning of your end step, gain control of target non-land permanent controlled by a player who has dealt combat damage by three or more pirates this turn. I love it. Oh, uh, that's so perfect. That's so flavorful. I mean, even if it's not like 
even if it wasn't a great card, I, A plus on flavor, so. Yeah, exactly. And I'm like, oh, you have to do three or more pirates. It's like, that's oh, probably not gonna happen too often, but who cares? Right, my- you're, 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 you got your pirate commander. <laughs> yeah, exactly. My first thought was like, oh, I'll just put Odric in there and like make. Yeah. <laughs> but but he's white, so like that doesn't work. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh well. Yeah. And I don't think he would stand with any pirates. Come on. Oh yeah, no, he's the guy's all about law and order. Far too martial and great for that. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so yeah, those are, are the three main commanders that come to mind. Yeah. Um, Maybe something else will be revealed, but right now those are the three that like. Stood out. Yeah, that are pretty exciting as far as Commander is concerned. But then there's this artifact. So it's Vanquisher's Banner. It's a five cost, and then it says, as it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Creatures you control of the chosen type get plus one, plus one. Whenever you cast a creature spell of the chosen type, draw a card. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, we just had all those tribal Commander decks yeah. come out, yeah. and then they... Go and put this one out here for everyone to want. So, five's a little expensive, but I mean, for what it does, it's not too bad. Right. I don't know if many people care about plus one, plus one in Commander. I mean, unless you're going wide, but drawing a card's always nice. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. I mean are you excited for this, or are you just kind of like, oh, that's a nice addition to a tribal deck? No, yeah, I think I'm going to put it in in something. Probably not my wizard's something. deck, but my No, my yeah, probably won't work too well. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Right. Draw. Cats would, wouldn't mind it. Cats. Okay, there it is. I'll put it in my yeah, cat Yeah, make deck. a lot of cat tokens, plussing them up. Okay, and then uh, another thing, another commander card is Star of Extinction, which is five and then two red, and destroy target land. Star of Extinction deals 20 damage to each creature and each planeswalker. Jeez. It's so... This, I mean, this is just a commander card. <laughs> like... Yeah, this basically. Exactly the sort of thing that commander players love doing nonsense like this. Yeah. I would never play this in limited. <laughs> I don't think you'll ever see standard play. But commander, this is for us. <laughs> yeah. 20 to each planeswalker. I know. Well, I will gladly pay that 7, right? <laughs> right. I, yeah, and I love that it says planeswalker. That's just... Yeah, that's very cool. A plus. And also... To make that card even better is the next card we have. Hey, Primal Amulet. <laughs> so it's a four cost, and then it says instant and sorcery spells you cast cost one less to cast. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, put a charge counter on Primal Amulet. Then if there are four or more charge counters on it, you may transform those counters and, or remove those counters and transform it. And then it transforms into Primal Wellspring, which is a land. That's so cool. And then I love the, art, the border, right? It's so cool. What? Yeah. Um, and then so you tap it and add one mana of any color to your mana pool. When that mana is spent to cast an instant or sorcery spell, copy that spell, and you may choose new targets for that copy. So it's that's awesome. It's like <laughs> pyromancer's goggles on steroids, right? Like it's so cool. And I mean, right there with the Star of Extinction, that's forty damage that's... to all the creatures and planeswalkers. <laughs> Just get him out of there. <laughs> right? Um, Someone plays Star of Extinction on your primal wellspring, you're like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, man. That's like, uh, now that you say that, I'm like really sad. <laughs> right? I'm like feeling loss in my heart from like just joking about that. <laughs> and then we had a few other cards we want to talk about. Yeah. Do you want to take the Merfolk here since it'll probably see play in your modern deck? Okay, oh, I'll read it first, and then and then I'll go yeah. into that. Um, so, Kopala, Warden of Waves, one blue blue for two two, spells your opponent's cast that target a merfolk you control costs two more to cast. Abilities your opponents activate that target a merfolk you control cost two more to activate. So, I'm guessing this is designed to take the spot of Kira, Great Glass Spinner. In, yeah, I could see that. Um, but I don't know. Like, do you think it's going to... Is gonna it enough? I don't think it's enough. I don't know. I mean... It, it's pretty cool. I think we'll have to wait and see. Uh, yeah. I, see I'm, how it works out. I'm really excited to see it. Yeah. I mean, it's a nice, like, oh, that's a cool idea. It's, look, it's, it seems like it has a home in Merfolk, but we'll wait and see if it's good enough. Right. And um, yeah. I think, since I only have one Kira, and that's huh. um, a, nice, a nice chunk of change to spend on a card... True. This is probably not going to be as much. So having exactly, having yeah. this in the deck would, I think, be a 
decent substitute. Why not have both? Right? Why, why not have both? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get them now while you can. Right, exactly. Um, do you want to talk about the next card? Oh, boy. <laughs> Rowdy Crew, four red red for a human pirate. It's a 3-3, three, three, has trample, and when it airs the battlefield, draw three cards, then discard two cards at random. If two cards that share a card type are discarded this way, put two plus one plus one counters on Rowdy Crew. <laughs> I love that flavor. I love that art. I love so much about this card, except for the card itself. Is it like Tybalt level of bad? Like, it's so bad. It's so bad. I mean, <laughs> like, you could say like, oh, well, at least it's a four mana three through a trample. That's not too bad. But then it's making you discard two cards at random, which is horrible. It's so bad. And then like, you might get plus one or two plus one plus one counters if those two random cards just happen to be the same type. Right. Like, when's that going to happen? If it was like, <laughs> draw three cards, then dis two, discard two cards of your choice, and if they're the same, you get plus two plus two counters. Like that'd be cool. Right. But the fact that it's at random just makes it so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I think this card suffers a little bit because it doesn't have flavor text. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like that was a great, great opportunity to do some. But drunken maybe nonsense they, like maybe they thought the art would be enough i, I mean it is quite enough i mean <laughs> <laughs> oh man but yeah that's and it's a mythic why is that a mythic i'm so confused by that yeah i don't understand when when you first showed me that i was like oh that's that's okay yeah and then i thought it was a rare and i thought it was mythic. like okay there must be something to break that i don't understand because it's not very good to me watch yeah it, it's going to come out with another card that's like perfect and takes over standard and you're going to be like yeah, exactly rowdy right. crew right <laughs> <laughs> it's all about that rowdy crew i'm excited for that deck name rowdy like <laughs> rowdy rowdy brew there we go rowdy brew there we go close <laughs> enough all right then we have sorcerer's spyglass sorcerer's spyglass two mana for a artifact as it enters the battlefield look at an opponent's hand then choose any card name activate abilities of sources with the chosen name can't be activated unless they're mana abilities. So kind of like a pithing needle almost? It's like pithing needle with half of Gitaxian probe, but like... Yeah, exactly. So I mean, it, it's great because it can go in any deck. Right. So if there's a deck that's just, you know, taking over standard, you'll always have this as a sideboard card. Right. And it doesn't even have to be one of the cards in their hand. You can like look at their hand like, okay, cool. I'm going to name this other card that's like essential to your deck right exactly no big yeah deal. so <laughs> it feels like it's something that's you know it is needed in standard and you want to talk about our last card here yeah um right. so i like to call this torpor guard um <laughs> tokatli tokatli honor guard creatures entering the battlefield don't cause abilities to trigger it's a one and a three for one and white yeah that's amazing that's <laughs> It's so good. I mean, that's just like any tools for death and taxes, yeah. hate bears. Right. Like, yeah. Anytime they put that type of, like you were saying, anytime they put that, like an ability of that on a creature, always cool. Yeah, it's so cool. And I feel like yeah. they've been doing that a lot lately. I mean, like with the, um, crap, the green dude, the Rem, Remnia, I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, oh, the, the uh, Crucible guy. Yeah, the Crucible guy. Yes. The Crucible Naga. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's like um, anytime they make artifacts with those type of abilities, it kind of gets out of hand. Yeah. So like, let's put these on creatures with colors and stuff. Yeah. And Maybe it, make it a little bit more fair. It'll work a lot better. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Maybe not having, letting all the decks play this card is good. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right, so how are you feeling about Ixalan so far? Ixalan's going to be so cool from like any it perspective, so right? Right. From a standard you perspective. Commander. Commander. Limited. Limited. Uh, modern, yeah. I mean, the Honor Guard could work in Modern. Merfolk, maybe. Merfolk? Legacy? I, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> how you feeling about that? How you feeling about Ixalan? Oh, I'm loving it so far. Uh, I liked Amonkhet, but I like whenever Magic just kind of goes crazy with, like, their own, like, not really, you know, calling back to, like, a certain time, like, Greeks or... Egyptians or anything, just like, you know what, pirates, dinosaurs, who cares? Let's just put these together, make our own special world. Right. And it's just like, they can go all out. Yeah. So, looking forward to it a lot. Are you. More spoilers to come. More spoilers to come. Are you disappointed Woo! that Jace is on 
Excellent. Um, well, I don't really care about Jace. <laughs> like, uh, did you hear, like, what the backstory of that is? No. Okay, apparently he's stuck on Ixalan because planeswalkers can't leave Ixalan. Yeah, so it's like there's some kind of barrier, and he that's why he looks so lost and everything, because he's just stuck there and can't leave. He can't planeswalk out of there. Huh. Yeah, so it could be an interesting story. So, hold on. Yeah. Never mind. What? <laughs> I, I'm gonna. I, I'm continuing to gather things for my my impossible weather light thing that I have going on in my head. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the weather light was destroyed, right? This is not going in the podcast. We'll edit this out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> the weather light was destroyed, right? But there's a possibility mm-hmm. that part of it is stuck inside of Karn. Yes. And. The likelihood of wizards going back to a really familiar set, pretty pretty good after yep. after Dominaria, and we've been back to Innistrad, we've been back to Ravnica. What else do people love? New Phyrexia. Lord. Oh yeah, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> just <messing with you. laughs> So that's where Karn was last. He's just going to show up on the Weatherlight. Weatherlight can travel in between planes. Jace is the poster boy for wizards. They have to get him off of there somehow. It's the weather light. <laughs> and think of how how much people will love it if Jace is the new captain of the weather light. No, shut up! <laughs> no! <laughs> you shut your mouth! <laughs> oh, it's what everyone always wanted. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> oh, you just set yourself up for that. I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's gonna hate so much. <laughs> And guess what? He's going to be the new Urza. Oh, God. No. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> so that's all for okay, this that, week. That does it for our podcast. You can follow me on Twitter at Booster underscore Tutor. I also make videos on YouTube. You can find those at YouTube.com slash Booster Tutor. You can uh, type what it says underneath my head into Twitter. But since this is a podcast, I'll announce it verbally <laughs> at Lady underscore Janie underscore J. Follow me on Twitter. All right. Thank you. This is our second podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>